devotee has had trauma in the past, is it enough to rely on the repetition of mantra for healing? Or should she have psychological help or a combination of both? A combination of both. A combination of because you are not yet trained to face those things. Ideally, if the person has no recourse to counseling, that person just through the repetition of the mantra can cut through the old trauma. Like I said, one chain of thought, one sequence of thoughts completely destroys all the other sequences, old sequences. But since you have recourse to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a therapist or a counselor, whatever, do both. And at one point of time, you will see that your trauma is all dissipating. The idea is you must take something. Trauma is a set of thoughts. Okay. And you need another set of more powerful thoughts. The divine name is the most powerful thing in this world. So you use another powerful tool to remove off this trauma. Yes, this, especially when you keep on repeating the mantra, the subconscious mind is also active. It brings out all these old impressions. So don't run away. Don't get frightened. Face it and use the mantra to, as it were, hack through those those traumatic thoughts. <clears throat> Pranav Swamiji, I have not taken any mantra diksha yet. So, can I chant mantras of Thakur or Ma or other deities? Is there any difference between chanting mantras with or without diksha? You can chant any mantras. Take this mantra for instance. Take this. Take any of the mantras. You start later on, if things are propitious for you, you will be kind of a recipient of a mantra from an accredited teacher. So till that time, you keep on preparing yourself. And as you prepare yourself, pray to the divinity within you to help you see the light. So you don't need any formal initiation right now. Keep on repeating a mantra. So there is a, a statement. I keep hearing Om Namah Shivaya in my sleep or when I'm about to sleep or in meditation. During the day, I don't chant the Om Namah Shivaya. Yeah, it's good. If you can hear, if you're hearing it in sleep, excellent. Oh, nothing better than that. So you shouldn't be, you should be glad about it. Uh, deepen it, I would say. Okay. There's another question here, Chris. Practicing in solitude helps a lot, but as a family person, it is extremely difficult to meditate on time or concentrate. Is being away from family communities only faster way to progress? No. In fact, we have actually plenty of time. You watch television, you, watch, you read the newspapers, you do hundreds of things, you gossip with friends and all, cut down certain parts of those time that when you need to kind of relax and you know. So you will find, uh, make this a part of your routine. The moment you make it a part of your daily routine, then you don't have to worry about practicing in solitude. As you keep on practicing, you are in solitude. You are alone with the mantra. So the world outside is a, you, it's a big bedlam. We don't worry about that. You are in solitude. Okay. Another question from you. Yeah, Swamiji, I'm always curious about the first conscious being in this universe. How did that first consciousness happen after the Big Bang? Well, <laughs> 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 
Uh, I think uh, you, why don't you go towards uh, that last uh, Thursday's talk on the Gita, Bhagavad Gita, uh, the eightfold uh, uh, nature of God. I want you to go to that and check it out. I've spoken about the whole kind of about the Big Bang. There was no Big Bang, just as expansion. And uh, the expansion, etc. You see, where did that being, there was always consciousness. What do you mean, this, uh, where did it come from? It never came from anywhere. That big bang which is in your mind, that came. Mm -hmm. That came in time. So we say it's 13.77 billion years. That came in time and it will go in time. That consciousness, which as you know, you are talking about uh, in terms of science, physics and all, that is a consciousness that physicists also are talking about. So that was already, always there. So it came. This thing came and what comes and what goes is transitory. Mm. So consciousness is real. What you see as a big bang is transitory. Okay. Can you please tell the history of Thakur Diksha Mantra? Who initiated first in this order did Holy Mother gave? Yeah, no. We, we tend to uh, emphasize that you ask questions related only to what has been discussed. So, Holy Mother used to give uh, initiation, however. Sri Ramakrishna used to give initiation. The direct disciple used to give initiation. So, that's it. So, it is, it's not, they never started. They discovered certain mantras, some new mantras. In the and they've made it into this, but some of these mantras are pre-existing. They are they are they pre-exist the universe. These things are there in the super consciousness. So Thakur and Ma and Swamiji, when they used to get into the super conscious state, they, they could see those mantras, experience and bring that out, and give that kind of a likeness of what they had seen or heard to their disciples. Okay. So, uh, the, the traditions of spiritual traditions date back thousands and thousands and thousands, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand years. So, these are not new traditions. They only energized it. Is it always necessary to chant the mantra 108 times? When I meditate, I cannot keep count. Oh, you don't need to. Please, we'll, dis we'll be discussing this in one of a future, you can say, series on this. You don't have wow. to worry. Just keep on repeating. The number is not important. The quality of meditation is important. Okay. I understand... Uh, the what? The yeah. Uh, what What are the tantric mantras? How do the mantras? Oh my God. Uh, tantric mantras are the bija mantras. So, ring, lung, wang, yang, sham, hung. All these are tantric mantras. That of the matrikas who use mantras for ulterior benefits. Oh please. Sir. What are those mantras? How do? Why do you have to bother about this? Ulterior motives. There's, but broadly speaking, there is a right hand way and the left hand way. This left hand is called, as I say, Vama Chara. These give you psychic powers and these give you God realization. What do you want? So this is what it is. So these mantras, like I said, are very powerful and they can be used for both ways. So you use it for this God realization, not for ulterior motive, because ultimately if you use it for any ulterior motive or in the left hand way, those mantras will harm you. It, it ultimately is found tantrikas, they die or they become mad or they become crippled because they have misused the mantras. There are hundreds and hundreds of cases. So take it from me. Uh, Shri Gupta Pranam, it is mandatory to visualize Thakur's image while doing Japa. Oh, it is 
mandatory but if you can visualize do it mechanically but what do you mean difficult it is yeah it is difficult but then you start with one and two three four and gradually and gradually and gradually like a picture yeah you keep a picture of uh, sri ram krishna in front of you and repeat a mantra then close your eyes and repeat the mantra so this gives a kind of a fillip to your practice it becomes very powerful i understand intellectually what maya and brahman is you don't understand you, nobody has understood it intellectually please it takes 12 years just to become a master of vedanta and vedanta itself says it's anirvachaniya that which is indescribable brahman cannot be described no maya also can be described okay so get this thing and we the brahman created maya to experience oh my god you don't create you are creating an illusion <laughs> when you think of yourself as the universe when you don't think of yourself as a body just your body you now you now you are aware of your body you are just a body you are not brahman okay when you can think of your whole body as the universe now you have understood a little of what maya and brahman is okay and there will come a stage where the universe rises and merges into its causes subtle causes and those subtle causes merge into the you can say causal right. realm that's the time when you experience brahman it's not you are not creating anything you have shri ram krishna says you don't even have you don't have the power to turn one black hair into gray <laughs> so you do, what you create is your own world the illusory world the imagination world the world you know the, there's a world outside there's a separate world inside i would like you to uh check out one of my old talks on self images which i had uh given here in at hollywood so i would you check it out and then you'll get into that mode of correct thinking can a mantra be chanting be done without beads oh yes of course along with the breath of course you can and uh, i have a limited time and i can chant and there's any other auspicious numerical times please don't bother about new numbers now but if you are want to stick to it use 54 or 12 that is another kind of auspicious So Rajiv says, uh, "Why Maya? Why not?" <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope I get that. <laughs> okay. Uh, does chanting mantras repeatedly lead to dhyana and samadhi? Yes. Constantly, as Sri Ram Krishna says, japa leads to dhyana, dhyana leads to samadhi. So, so this is the you can say the path. so keep on repeating over and over again om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu